Hey y'all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south, more specifically, Somerville, Georgia, and I am in front of Howard Finster's Paradise Gardens. Now for those of you who don't know, Howard Finster, probably the most influential folk artist of all time. He's the one that kind of brought folk art into the mainstream. He uh, painted pictures in the 80s. He was actually used um, by the Talking Heads and R.E.M. He did several album covers from uh, for them. Um, he was a very religious man. He was a Baptist. And the way he saw it, he didn't particularly have anything against that type of music, but he saw it that if he got to put his religious artwork on their album covers, that was just more exposure for his religious message. Now originally he had built, his original goal was to build a museum of man's invention and he was going to do a exhibit on every invention ever made. And then that's a very, very lofty goal. But eventually uh, he decided that he would instead make a visionary art garden here at the Paradise Gardens and it currently stands right now. Howard passed away a while back. Um, there was a lot of iffiness about if this place was going to survive or not, but it is standing, it is operational, and we're going to go check it out. Follow me. Hey, folk art kitty. What are you doing? Oh, no. Here's some of uh, Howard's leftover art supplies. Now this casket here was donated by a local funeral home. Apparently Howard originally had intended to be cremated, placed in the casket, and then left here at the gardens as part of the exhibit, but his family did not agree with that, and he was buried elsewhere. Here's some jars of fun, but it looks like they've been dried out. That's an octopus in there from a human body. Not sure what that is. That looks to be some sort of bird in there. And a rattlesnake in that one. Look at this, a specially designed Howard Finster Coke machine. He was actually incorporated Coca-Cola products into a lot of his artwork, so I guess they consider him an ambassador. Are you going to take the tour with me, Folk Art Cat? Time waits for no one. Take time to be holy. I've never seen a person I didn't love. This is the Folk Art Chapel. Apparently, not allowed to go up in there because it is considered unsafe for some reason. Here is Howard's workshop. Some interesting things. Uh, look at all those just random bits of things tied up there. Just a complete random assortment. It's a turtle shell, a teapot. Oh, it's funny to see how someone's mind works. Looks like they got a couple. He's got a couple stretch Armstrongs up there. Okay, this is not the same cat. <laughs> Looks like there's Elvis all over. I guess they're not all Elvis. It's different people. Elvis. Jesus. This 
Looks like this is a uh, little church for cats. And there's old Howard. Man out of aluminum siding. And here is Howard's chapel. Now when I was here before, I actually had the uh, casket right here where Howard wanted to be placed. The intention was for him to sit here in the chapel, his remains. I don't know why they moved it indoors. Folk art kitty too. How are you? Now this structure here is called the rolling chair overview ramp. It's like this bridge over the property created by Howard that he decorated with I guess, some of his artwork and some of the artwork that was given to him by other people. Coming from that speaker. At 198 years in our three generations, in this vision I had, there was still plenty of space ahead of us. Space is so far. It's a big pile of bicycles. So nobody but God will know where Somewhere yonder, there's a university that I was in. I said to them, I see this knife belonged to Elijah Pruitt of Eden, Alabama, grandparents of Reverend Emmett Smith. I don't know what that is. There's the rolling chair overview that we were just walking in. Now this is truly amazing. Remains of unknown body presented by Dr. Harden of Trine, Georgia. Now what's in that crypt right there is a 200 year old skeleton that was unearthed when someone was building the foundation of their house. And they just simply didn't know what to do with it in the community. So someone suggested, give it to Howard. And they did, and they gave it to Howard and he built this tomb for it and gave it a proper burial where it stays here at the Paradise Gardens. Look at this big old shoe. <laughs> the walkway here is just paved with random items. You can see a towing hook there. There's some reflectors from a car. wall here, just all these little things embedded in. Now this structure here would have been the original gateway or entrance to the gardens. Let's get up and take a look at some of the detail. You know, there's some non-Christian religious things in here as well. We have Jesus and Mary there. Just 
just little items hanging from the ceiling, little plastic toys. Look how this refrigerator painted. A bottle house. It's like literally every square inch is decorated. I love this tiny little church right here. Look at this, there's just like an axe built in right there. You got a chandelier. Mrs. Florence Michelle Haircutters. This building right here. Go down here and look at the windows. He's written his resume on the windows. Chat News, Tennessee. A newspaper in California. An Atlanta newspaper, I guess every time he appeared in some public way, he would write it here. In Somerville News, three times. Oh, what's that? Art cover of folder of Library of Congress on Channel 5 T Tennessee twice. These are some of the Cokes that Howard drank that inspired him. Those are all bicycle handles. This is the mirror house. Let's see. It's like mirror, mirrors everywhere. Well, hey there. This big pile of faces is interesting. We got Jesus and Mary over there. There's a hand. And there's like some creepy faces down here. Super creepy faces. Oakland Barnyard. Squat down. I don't know what all these little springs are. Howard must have been a short man. So I'm squatted way down. It's like they piled snakes. This looks like a big pile of snakes, like a snake pit. You know, I love these folk art environments and you know I've traveled around the country and seen a lot of different folk art environments. I've met a lot of folk artists and every folk artist I've ever met I feel is influenced by Howard Finster in some way. Little bits and pieces of his work it's just to influence everybody or influence people that influence them. I just there's really just as far as like southern culture, southern folk art, I, he's just the man. the other half of the walkway. I had mentioned R.E.M. earlier and they actually collaborated with Howard and wrote a song about him. The song is called Maps and Legends. But another uh, song they did uh, 
Radio Free Europe actually filmed right here at the Paradise Gardens. You can see this giant pile of bicycles in the video. This looks like some sort of dentist chair. We have this car here, it's not in great shape. I heard the wreck on the highway, but I didn't hear nobody pray. It's interesting. All right, folk art cats, it was a pleasure to meet both of you. I hope someday our paths will cross again. I don't think it can be overstated just how important Howard Finster is. You know, kind of almost the father of modern folk art. And, um, you know, I consider myself, people ask, I consider myself a folk artist. I don't paint, but I make videos. And just like Howard didn't go to art school or have any training, neither did I. I just kind of took what I could find and pushed it out there, put all my heart into it, and that's what he did. And so that resonates a lot with me. And I think a lot of other people out there can resonate with that, of being a folk artist, being of the people, of yourself, not having the skill necessarily, but having enough passion to push something out there that moves something in people. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like these videos, I have an interactive map down below that'll show you all the places I've been. And you can make suggestions on places that I need to go. Also, you can buy uh, t-shirts down there. And if you wanna donate any money on Patreon, a donation of at least $3 will get me to send postcards to you on my road trip. And for now, this one's in the bag.